digital natives or the millennials, uh, they have become kind of a puzzle for banks and financial, com uh, financial service companies to target. Uh, so what's uh, the perception right now is that they may decide the fate of the consumer finance sector uh, in the future. So today we are going to make an attempt to uh, demystify this. Hi, I'm Raghu. I'm the director of marketing at Aspas Systems. And welcome to the uh, another edition of Millennial Banking uh, Flicks. So to demystify this theory, uh, we have Brian Fanzo, uh, who is the millennial keynote speaker, uh, founder of iSocial Fans, and an author of the book, uh, Millennial Mindset. Thanks for joining us, Brian. Thanks for having me. So uh, I think sometimes we feel that millenn the subject of millennial is kind of beating a dead horse. A lot of people have talked about it. Uh, there's a kind of perception that's been uh, given to them. They are mercurial, they are selfish, they are very digitally savvy, and um, they don't trust Big Bang, they just trust their friends. So there is a kind of, uh, they are kind of a moving target. So what do you think, as a, for a start, what can banks and financial services companies can do to uh, attract them? So I think the first thing that we have to do when we start thinking about millennials is, are we attracting a certain age group or are we attracting a persona or behaviors of a certain type of people? So in my, in, in my book, A Millennial Mindset, what I try really hard to focus on is less about uh, you know, it's kind of understanding, do I, do I want to reach a digitally connected consumer? Because I will argue there's a lot of digitally connected Gen Xers and baby boomers, and we have, of course, Gen Zs coming up. Sure. Or are we trying to reach those that were born between 1980 and the 2000 mark, where it's that traditional millennial? So I think the first thing is we want to wrap our head around who we're trying to, to attract. And I, I will argue a majority of the time with the clients I work with, they want to attract a digitally connected consumer. And so now the question co comes back to them, how do, I, how do I attract this digitally connected consumer? And what do I need to do to make that happen? And the first thing is, uh, it's, we've changed kind of this, this role where for so many years, the, the business, the brand had the power. The brand had the data, the brand had, the business had the, the, the technology, the banks, you know, you had to go into a bank to, to do your banking. You had to go, you know, sit and meet with somebody and the times have changed. The consumers have more power than they've ever had before. The consumers have more information than they've ever had before. And so with that being in, in, in thought process, we have to start thinking about how do I go to where these digitally connected consumers are? and do business with them how they want to do it. Let's, let's face it, today, I mean, I have three daughters, but even, you know, let's say, millennials and Gen Z, we don't even like to watch commercials on TV anymore. I mean, Absolutely. my daughter gets a five-second you know, commercial on a YouTube video and she freaks out, where the old, the old banking consumer, we were used to being interrupted by TV. We, people would tell us when and where we can do things. Now we want to be able to take a picture with our check we want to be able to bank 24 seven. If we're traveling overseas, we want to be able to, to change our, our, you know, our security parameters on our phone. We don't have to go to the bank. And so I think a lot of it is we have to create kind of this on demand experience and it's a shift. It's a shift for every single business, especially the, the banking industry where now the consumer, especially the digitally connected consumer has more power than they've ever had before. I think absolutely. I think uh, one of the things what we have seen is that, you know, when probably I was growing up, the bank, I know where I could meet a relationship manager, shake their hands. It's kind of an era of handshake, right? But now they are, the uh, consumers are hiding behind the mobile phone. So previously there was at least, uh, I know banks can say, hey, I can create a last, long lasting relationship or even expect loyalty. But now this change in scenario, what do you think banks can do different? I mean, can they still get a loyalty from the millennials? So loyalty, I believe is actually, be, you're actually able to strengthen loyalty if you use social media and digital correctly. And I have, a, I have a great line for you because the way you said that it set me up perfectly is my dad is a candy salesman and my dad's always believed that you, every, every single business decision he's ever made has been with a handshake. And so I have a tagline that I say that you don't use digital and social media to replace a handshake. You use it to get new handshakes and turn some of those handshakes into hugs 
or that loyalty that you're talking about. And so when you're a bank and you're thinking about this, what you want to change is that if you're, if someone's connecting with you online and you're exchanging emails, this is all that digital trust. When that person enters the bank, your goal is for when they walk in the bank, they give the banker a hug. And what I mean by that, and it doesn't have to be a hug, physically a hug, <laughs> but a, a hug, a hug in the sense where the trust and loyalty was built because the, the digital communication is a conversation. I think for a lot of people, when you think how it's so hard for me to, to build real, uh, loyalty online, what we're thinking is we're broadcasting at people online and people are shouting back at us. And that's not the way it can be. It should be a conversation. So when, you know, when you're, when you're doing, you know, I work with a lot of uh, different businesses on how to leverage live video. I love live video, right? And, and video is what I call a active conversation, yep. not a broadcasting, right? TV is where broadcasting is. TV, you, 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 you scream your message at people. In the digital landscape, we need to break down that, that broadcasting perspective and we need to start having conversations with people. So start having that one-to-one -one relationship. When you get to email, use people's first name. Don't automate, you know, send me, you know, those emails where it's like just replace the first name and it's the same email. Nobody's tricked by that anymore. Like I, the amount of emails we're getting right now this week for Thanksgiving week here in the United States is ridiculous because it's, they act like they care, but we all know it's an automated system with a replace first name uh, character variable. And so rather than doing that, take three or four minutes and create a, a custom email. And this is, these are things that we would do in real life. Like the reason that you said loyalty was easier, not easier, but loyalty was existed because you came into the bank. It's because guess what? We didn't automate that when you came into the bank. You came yep. into the bank, you got a real person to hand a handshake. We spent the entire time with you, right? We, we sat down, we looked at you, we didn't, we weren't multitasking, we weren't talking to you and broadcasting it to 30 other people. But when we go on to the digital landscape, for some reason, we take this assumption that, well, we're gonna take the shortcut and the automation, but then we're gonna get mad when we don't get the same level of loyalty. And so I guess my, my opinion on that is, it depends on time, the same amount of dedicated, personalized focus as you would if I came in the banking doors. If you okay. do that on the digital conversation, I promise you the loyalty will be, still be there. <laughs> it's the problem is for some reason when we go from, we go from a brick and mortar in-person conversation, we shift it to digital, we all, we all of a sudden forget to do the things that make the in-person relationship so powerful. Awesome. Uh, I think follow up on that, you know, uh, there is so much of hype created, you know, oh, they, those are millennials are the, our next customer base and everything. But then is the hype, uh, does it have a minute merit? Are we over overcomplicating things? Are marketers, uh, or do marketers should say, hey, you know, let's stick to the basics, maybe add some mix of technology that should be more than enough. Are we, you know, hyping it up too much? So 50% so of the workforce today, as of right now, is millennials or people under the age of 36 years old. The, by 2020, so in three years, 50% of all spend in America will be a millennial or younger. The, the thing we have to remember about that is 50% is also not millennials, right? right? So there's an interesting juxtaposition when all of a sudden we're, we're worried about millennials taking over, but they're taking over 50%. So I always tell people that you have to you have to understand that that generation of move, but you can't alienate or shift so dramatically that you lose the 50% that are already your customers today and already are there today. And one of those things that I think we need to start to think of is a lot of the desires of a millennial customer today are the same as everyone else. We want people to care about what we, what we, uh, what we want. We want to be connected. We want things where we want it, when we want it, how we want it. I mean, I, would, I will ask every Gen Xer and every baby boomer, do you want to go back to having no TiVo and no on-demand with TV commercials, or do you like the on-demand world? And I think every single person is going to like, I love being able to get what I want, where I want it, how I want it. And so the, the question now is, I think what the weird thing is, is for the last – let's say seven to, to 10 years, we've been using social media, digital technology to distance ourselves from the, cons the customer. Yep. And what has happened was we've, we've really, we label the millennials as this digitally connected person or persona that's changing that. But I think it's everybody that's using digital has said, hold on a second. 
even though we're online, even though we're connected, we are still humans. And so I, I would actually argue that there's, it's not just millennials that we have to focus on. It's, I break it down into two categories, digitally connected or the digitally unplugged, right? So the digitally unplugged are like my dad. My dad, even though he has an iPhone, even though he has an email address, he's like, he looks at me and he's like, I would never take a picture of a check in banking, right? Like for him, he has to walk in there and physically, like the amount of times he will look at me and, and see me taking a picture and he goes, well, how do you know they get that? I'm like, well, dad, I get a you know, notification right away on my phone. And he's like, no, I have to go into the bank. I need to hand it to, to a human and they have to process it and they have to give me a receipt. And I look at my dad, I'm like, well, that same receipt you get is the same receipt I get via email, right? But these are two different personas. But my dad's on the one extreme. I think a majority of people are very digitally connected. They want technology and digital to make their lives easier. I think, unfortunately for us, we've been using this space to not make their lives easier, but to kind of automate and scale. And we need to come back full circle. So I think we have, if, we, if there's one bit of advice I give is we need to start thinking much more human level with everything we do digitally. Right, so when we add a new feature to an app in banking or on the website, all of a sudden we add a new tab, walk, walk yourself through it as if they were in the bank. Does the same human characteristics exist in that website interaction? And if it doesn't, how can we make that happen, right? So like having live chat, like I, I'm a big fan of live chat in the, in the website space because okay. when someone gets frustrated on the website, the last thing you wanted them to have to do is pick up the phone. Because they're using a website for a reason. They don't want to. They don't want to call the, the one eight hundred number. And so, if you're able to help them with a chat on on the web, that's a that's a powerful piece. And so, I think when you start looking at this, the conversation. Yes, the millennial generation and those younger. So those under the age of thirty. And I'm thirty six years old. So I'm, I'm what I call a, a pager wearing millennial. So I, <laughs> I I had a pager growing up. I didn't have Facebook in college, but I think if you look at myself and younger. That generation is not afraid to say what they want. They're, they now live in a world where they realize that they have the power. But I also believe they're looking to, for, people, for a brand to give them loyalty. Like I'm, I'm loyal to Delta Airlines to a fault. I will spend $200, $300 more to fly on Delta compared to another airline because the experience is so great. And because I have a loyalty program with them, that they take it, they take care of me at such a great level. And I think if we think about that in banking. If if a bank is willing to go above and beyond, create an experience I can't get anywhere else, right? Like the the idea where you have to sometimes you know argue your case with a bank over thirty five dollars, where you're like the bank knows that if they want to keep you for a lifetime, and you're arguing with a customer over thirty five dollar you know overdraft charge. Is that really worth it, right? And I think this is one of those things in the financial space, if they really wanna break down those barriers, the experience has to stand on its own. And there, I think if every person that's listening to this right now, the banking space for millennials, we're looking for the, our bank of the future. And if you're able to capitalize on it today, you will capture a generation of people that will be, be beyond loyal. But the, the question becomes, are you willing to do that? Are you willing to do the things necessary to create an online experience that you've spent years creating offline that, let's face it, the last thing I want to do is go into a bank? Yep, and I agree on that. I think one of the, I think lastly, one of the things which uh, I think we have observed is that me, I mean, I'm like uh, 45 years old. I'm still kind of, I would say I'm old school. But then if I have a problem with my bank, I call them, say, hey, this something is not working. But the, uh, you can say the millennial generation, they don't even tell that they just move on, right? So uh, banks never even know that they have left. So if, from your perspective, if there are two or three things which you'll say, okay, these are things which you got to perform or you got to do if you want to even have a chance of getting them in your bank. So I think the first one is think of digital and social as, as investing in a conversation with your community, not investing in a broadcasting or an advertising or even a marketing for that matter. I, I believe you're investing on creating a conversation. That, that comment you know, where, how do I build loyalty? You build loyalty through conversations online, not through broadcasting at people online. Because like you said, I mean, we're, we're living in a world now, and this is always good to put in perspective. You know, let's say 10 years ago, 10 years ago, we would consume our, our, our content via 
the web via the computer and you know radio but that's really you know majority of our distractions yep. now we have a mobile device that has hundreds of apps we have you know 15 20 different social networks there's so many distractions in life today that if you just add another distraction in the digital noise all you're going to be is digital noise so the first my first bit of advice for financial space is definitely treat digital as a conversation it is about building that loyalty don't worry about how do i get the next 100,000 customers think about how do i get 100 loyal customers using digital right and i think that's a, a first place to think the second one is I, I really believe in, in my concept is called think like a fan and what that really means think like a fan is it put yourselves in the shoes of your consumer so if you want to create a you know in bank type experience on your website walk through every step of your website as if you are in the bank and I, I mean I even like doing this role-playing live at a bank right go into a bank yeah. and you're like okay I'm at the front door which is the website okay now I'm clicking because I want to check out the loan rates where would I check out the loan rates in the bank, right? You walk in, you probably meet somebody. Well, am I meeting anybody in the online experience? If not, let's put a, let's put a video up there at the top of that, that tab and say, you know, welcome to the loan rate section. We are proud of, you know, cause these are these things where we, we kind of, <laughs> we, we skip these, these small steps, but for that digitally connected consumer, that experience where you're thinking about all of those things really does matter. And I think the last one is, you have to think about this entire digital consumer as how do I transfer that digital handshake into a hug? And that means how do I, how do I think about everyone that we're, we're connecting with and everything that I'm investing in? How do I take that to the next level? And I think taking that to the next level doesn't have to be expensive. You know, it's part of it ends up being trusting your employees, right? You need to trust your employees yep. so your employees can start doing some of the things that maybe you don't traditionally do, right? And then last but not least, it's, it's a breakdown if you're only looking at millennials because even though I'm a millennial, I think we need to take the conversation away, excuse me, away from the year you were born and we need to move the conversation to say, okay, what is everyone that has a mobile phone and wants to do mobile banking? Let's start bucketing people based on the, the behaviors of that consumer rather than bucketing people on one variable, which is the year they were born, right? <laughs> so, which is a, a variable that we can't even control, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. we, we, we literally bucket everybody from a year they were born, which is something we can't control. I would rather throw up a bunch of things on the board, right? Say, okay, the mobile consumer, the people that don't want to talk on the phone, the people that are connecting with us with social media, the people that don't trust banks today, okay? That's yeah. one consumer. How do we reach them? Let's, and they don't have an age, they don't have a sex, they don't have a race, they don't have a color. What they are, are they are people that are looking for a bank of the future. I'm one of them, I can tell you. For me, I have a, I have a very frustrating bank experience <laughs> across the board. And I, I, I'm, I'm ready to be loyal. I'm ready to go all in with a bank that is ready to create a new experience for me. And I think I speak for a lot of people in this, in this not even generation of these people that are frustrated today, but we know that we have to have something. Therefore, I, 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 I put the onus on yourself and those that are helping the, the financial industry to you know, really push this forward because I, I believe there's so much value to be added and we, we desire it. Now we just need to have it. Awesome. Thanks for spending time uh, with us. It's a pretty amazing insight into millennials. Uh, thanks for all the time. I hope uh, banks can use this to you know, further their case. So thank you for the time. Thank you. Have a good one.